So when we talk about personalised learning, first thing we thought about was the learner. Um, and what we want to do is go back to essentially what's our, our mission statement which is how do we provide coaching and make coaching available to all employees to remove the barriers to, to scalable coaching. Um, and we do that through our personalized learning journeys, which are generated by the system and presented to the learner. And then from an organization perspective, what we're trying to provide is meaningful data and meaningful insight into the learning opportunities you're providing to your employees, so online and offline, um, helping you identify skill gaps and identify the impact of that learning. So why? Why have we created personalized learning? Well, the first thing we've identified, and this underpins everything we do within Access Accelerate, um, is how do we make learning meaningful? How do we make le put learning in place which engages the learner, encourages them to come back and encourages them to take ownership of what they're doing, rather than just being prescribed a set of learning. Um, the other thing for us, and I don't mean to teach us to suck eggs, but um, one of the key drivers of people leaving businesses is a lack of, or at least a perceived lack of progression. Um, so where they don't feel like the organisation is making opportunities for them and making it easy for them to take advantage of those opportunities. So our personalised learning, and when we talk about the configuration, I'll bring this to life, is all about taking the skills and the competencies that matter to you as an organisation, putting those in front of your employees and letting them identify where they should develop in relation to those, making it meaningful to them within your organisation. Um, and then the other thing that we know is it can be hard to engage people with online learning. So it's all well and good taking a big suite of resources and putting it out there in front of staff and essentially hoping they'll go and find their way around and find their way to the meaningful content. So with personalised learning journeys, what we're doing is we're asking the learner and asking the employee to identify themselves, where they should be developing and where they should be growing and helping them understand how that relates to their role. Um, and then finally, when we look at learning data, it's all well and good being able to say, we've engaged 20% of our learners, or 80% of our learners, or 100% of our learners. That's fine, but what have they got from it? Well, actually, what does that learning mean to them? And what does that learning mean to the organization? And that's the data that we put behind personalized learning, which I'm gonna come in and show you. So how do we do that? How does it work? That is very bright in the front, I apologize. Um, so firstly, if we look at the learner, consider the learner. Um, what we're doing is we're putting a set of skills, competencies in front of them um, and we, we can work with you to define what those skills are and we're asking them to rate their confidence and we do confidence on purpose, we're not asking them to rate competence, that's the job of an evaluation, that's where a line manager comes in. What we're asking is confidence, so you as, a, as an employee, how confident do you feel with this skill? So what the system's then going to do is take that data and push them into learning around the, the development areas they've identified themselves. They will also fall into a series of emails, so we're engaging them and bringing them back. So once they've taken that personalized learning assessment that I'm about to show us, they're gonna be given their personalized learning program, and they're gonna receive regular emails encouraging them to come back and re-engage with that learning. Finally, the last step of that journey is we want them to re-evaluate. So having assessed themselves against these competencies, rated their confidence, engaged in learning, both online and offline, we want them to come back and tell you, tell the system, what difference that's made. Has it improved their confidence? So they feel now more confident to progress in the organization because they've, like, they've grown within these skills and development areas. And then from the organization, what we're doing is we're taking really two key bits of data. We're looking to show you the learning gain. So over time, by providing these tools and resources, both online and everything else being done within the organization to help people develop, what's the impact? So in 12 months time, having put all of these programs and resources in place, do your staff feel more confident, more confident is the question we're trying to answer and give you the data for. And the other thing is identifying skill gaps in the organization um, on a holistic level. So looking across an entire organization, the behaviors, the skills, the competencies that matter most to us as an organization, where is confidence low or where is confidence high? Therefore, as an L&D organization, where should we be putting our focus in terms of developing employees in line with what matters to us? So that's how we do it. Um, there is behind this, and this is the last slide I promised before our demonstration, a huge content of library, uh, library of content. Um, so we create short, snappy learning, uh, video, e-learning, written content, which makes up those personalized learning plans. So having assessed as an employee, identified in my development area, we have loads of content that sits behind that. We're very transparent about where that content comes from. It's a coaching panel um, of professional qualified coaches, and we're going to show you all of that now. So let's jump in and have a look at the system.
What I want to do is really quickly, before we look at the personalized learning assessment, is just show you that library I described. So everything that sits in the platform, because everything is browsable. We're not, we're not limiting learners to what's suggested to them off of the assessment. So there's a whole library of content here, hundreds of resources covering, if I just scroll down the page, soft skills, professional skills, all, all with a focus on helping career growth and thinking about right, internal mobility. How can we take a, a coaching session that would discuss that and digitize it? Where that comes from is our panel of coaches. So I know a lot of learning can be quite anonymous when it's online. As a learner, you may question, well, how credible is this? Where is it coming from? Why should I listen to this? So all the coaches that contribute to our platform all have a profile in here for the learner to see. A written profile and a video profile of the coach talking about their background and where they specialize. We also have a suite of just personal self-assessments. And these will often make up the learning plans that follow the assessment. So just helping an employee understand them scale and themselves better. So how do we wrap all that together? So taking all of that content, this right here, is my personalized learning assessment. So this is our, uh, our landing page, our development landing page within Workspace. I'm not here to talk about the other bits on screen, but what they are, just so you know, it's our goals and settings app um, and what we call path to great. So it's a way of mapping employees. We put personalized learning right beside that. So as an employee, anytime you come in and you're checking your goals and objectives for the quarter, for the year, your personalized learning report will sit right beside it. The way it works is we're asking statements. Now this is where the configuration comes in. So we're asking statements in relation to a category. In this instance, the statements relation to self-awareness. And as a learner, I'm rating my confidence, one to 10, really simple to do. Shouldn't take more than five, maximum 10 minutes for a learner to complete this assessment. Um, and as I say, asking confidence on purpose. Where the configuration comes in is what you can change, and we work with you to change here, is the categories being measured. So if relationships isn't interesting to you, but perhaps commercial awareness is something you're really trying to drive in the business, then that's what we measure. And that's what we ask the learner to rate their confidence against. And the statements. So the statements obviously not set in stone either. You use your language, language that matches the way you position your competencies internally already. Um, so that it's not only asking the user to rate confidence, but it's building their knowledge and awareness of the skills you're looking to drive within the business. Having rated myself, so I won't go through all of these, I receive a report which looks like this. So this is the end product for me as a learner. What this is telling me is an overall confidence score across all of those competencies, highlighting my three lowest confidence areas, and then down here, encouraging me to take action. So for example, relationships has been identified as a low confidence area for me. If I hit take action here, I'll be presented with a suite of learning. So a preset suite of learning. The way we do this, and the way we would work with you to do this, is we set a high, medium, low against each of those categories. The, uh, the scales for high, medium, low can be flexed, and we set the learning that sits behind. So these are all resources. I'm not now gonna go through the resource, but this is now gonna be automatically tracked as well. So if I watch a video, I take a course, I read an article, the system's gonna track it, mark it as complete for me. The final step here is having gone through my learning, is the system's gonna encourage me to reassess to go back into that, that personal learning assessment, rescore myself, and that's where it comes into what we can now give you. So my last page here, and forgive me, I wasn't able to open an admin area, so these are screenshots, um, but this is the data you'll be able to get out of the system on your side now as an organization. Key things, learning game. So right here, what I'm seeing is, number one, my score for first time takers. So across all those competencies, all those categories, we've got a confidence score of 59%. And down here, those that have retaken what that's done. And I've done this on purpose. This might look like erroneous data. We've got a minus. We've actually got a drop in confidence as a result of engaging. Um, that happens, which is why I put it there, actually. And this was learning for us when we produced this. So what we found is that some people, having self-assessed and then engaged in a bit of learning, which actually in, you know, increased their knowledge of said subject, realize they're not quite as confident as they thought they were, and actually they could do with more support around this. So that minus five, I think I see on screen there, or six, is, not, is, is possible, it does happen. Long term, we will always look to see an improvement, and we, we almost always do. But in the short term, you may sometimes see a drop off. So that's your learning gain from the impact of all your learning. You can then go into the specific categories. And this is where we start helping you to identify the skill gaps, or at least the lower confident areas. So right here is again, looking holistically right now across all, all, all learners within the organization, 
how they've scored themselves. Now with this data, you can segment it further. So we can receive employee data in through an API or a manual feed. So we can look at things like departments, we could look at seniority levels, however you want to segment that data. That's where it can get really powerful when you're looking at where to engage in the business, where to put your learning focus across the business. Um, because not every department, not every employee needs the same thing. And that's what you can learn from here. Um, and then finally, for each of those categories, you'll see your score movement over time. So over time, you'll see how that specific skill is trending. Are people improving in confidence? Um, and actually, I won't, well, I can't click on it here, but you can get the individual user data. And that's the last point I want to make, because that's optional. Um, we can put all the user data in here, so you guys can go in and see for a very specific employee where they started, where they are now. Or we can actually anonymize the whole thing. So you still get your top level data. You'll still see as an organization where confidence is high and low. Uh, but you may want to position this as a, this is not tracks, you know, this is not a, a measure of your performance in your role. This is for you as a learner to take ownership of your learning, um, which is why we put that option in there on the user data. Um, and that's the end of my presentation. I hope that was interesting. If anyone has any questions, I don't think this really facilitates it, but you're welcome to come find me. I'll be right here. So uh, come over and have a chat. Thank you, guys.